Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, thank you for being uh, here. We have journeyed together, you know, uh, reading the Word of God, and then let it speak to us. Um, we come to the end of so-called the letter, okay, that written by uh, John, and today we are going to uh, cover third John um, in BWJ, and it is very short. Um, only 14 verses, uh, one chapter. So it's one of those so-called short uh, book uh, in our Bible. Um, so some people say that uh, Third John, okay, uh, written by, of course, Apostle John, is a direct opposite of Second John, which we read uh, yesterday. And why is it so? Uh, because Second John is addressed to a woman and of course the john is addressed to a man but it's more than that because uh, in yesterday's reading of second john okay uh, we know this uh, person this uh, lady devoted uh, christian believers she walked in love and truth but she was warned okay uh, don't be over in terms of supporting those uh, false teachers because you know false teachings false prophets were quite prevalent uh, at that time whereas for third of john apart from being written and addressed to a man okay who also walked in love and truth but the focus of the letter is to show love and care to genuine you know prophets traveling preachers evangelists and uh, interestingly, if you have time to read uh, uh, the uh, Unlocking the Bible by David Paulson, he gave a very good comparison uh, between 2nd and 3rd John. And he did a very good analysis, you know, between uh, man and woman and why, you know, both so-called letters in a sense, you know, can be applicable in today's uh, so-called Christian life. So if you have that book, uh, Unlocking the Bible by David Pawson, um, please read it, yeah, Second and Third John, and you'll be amazed uh, how he analyzed the difference between man and woman. And yet, at the end of the day, you know, both are still used by God mightily, yeah. So let's focus on today, which is uh, Third John. Um, first, I want to uh, just share that there are a few similarities between these two. Uh, letters. Number one, it shows that John, he's very concerned, okay, for the health of the church and the people in the church. Okay, that is one of the similarities between both letters. The second similarity is false teachers and the people propagating it, okay, are taking advantage of Christians' love and compassion. Okay. Uh, this is the second similarities. The third similarity is generosity and the warmth of Christians. Okay, there are natural characteristics for those who follow Jesus and who know the truth. Generosity and warmth of Christians. And lastly, the fourth similarity between these two letters is an elder or a more matured Christian is duty bound to check okay, and disciple the weaker Christian so that they do not fall away. And it's demonstrated here and the reason why John has uh, written uh, okay, these three letters, first, second and John. Okay, a more mature Christian is duty bound to check and disciple the weaker Christians. Now, this uh, third of John, okay, we're going to cover three persons, okay, with different personalities. And later on, I will share how it can be applicable in our life. Before we, you know, go into deeper about who are these uh, three persons, but first, first, let us look at how did John care for what he called his children, okay? And if you have the Bible, you can turn to 3rd of John. The opening is depending on which version you are using. I'm using, I'm now reading from uh, the NLT versions. 
verse 1, it says that the letter is from John, the elder. I'm writing to Gaius, my dear friend, whom I love in the truth. Verse 2, dear friend, I hope all is well with you and that you are as healthy in body as you are strong in spirit. That you are as healthy in body as you are strong in spirit. What we can see here immediately is though John himself identified as the elder and by now everyone will know that he was with Jesus all the time. So in a sense he should be in a much superior positions in a church settings, put it this way. But he did not see himself as so-called a church superior, but as co-workers in the gospel of truth. In addition, we can read from verse 2. In addition, okay, we can learn that he cares. He cared for someone doing God's work. Okay, and he cared for Gaius' physical and spiritual health. Now, how many times have we shown our love and concern to fellow Christians? I think many a time we only care about their physical, sorry, their spiritual health. Okay, as long as the person read the Bible, pray, worship, go to church, okay, uh, we are happy. Meaning that we have done all our so-called check-ins. But here, John demonstrated to us. No, we need to make sure the physical well-being of fellow Christians, especially church workers, pastors, are equally important. Contrary to our belief, God's workers, especially pastors, they do fall sick. Okay, They do fall sick. They are not superman or superwoman. So we need to pray that they are so-called at the best of God's service all the time, all the time. That's why we pray, we intercede for missionaries, pastors, evangelists. Okay, So a balanced life is a life that honors God, not just for uh, applicable to church workers or pastors. A balanced life that honors God is applicable to all believers. So in just simple two verses, what we can you know, deduce from here that John, though he has all the authority as a church elders or so-called church superiors, yet he humbled himself because he see the importance of Gaius, a fellow gospel co-workers, and he is very concerned about the physical and spiritual well-being of co-workers in the gospel, uh, in the work for, of the gospel. Yeah? So this is something that we can learn you know, from John. So now let's dive into the three persons uh, of interest today. Um, even though today, Third John didn't touch on false teachers or false teachings, but it touched on false attitude, false attitude towards God's servant. So today's uh, my sharing title will be Grace and Hospitality. Okay, my sharing title will be Grace and Hospitality. So the first person we're going to, uh, in a sense, uh, study in detail is Gaius. And this is the he is the recipient of this letter, and Gaius is a person who walk in the truth. Okay, uh, if you turn your Bible again to the next two verses, verse uh, three to four, yeah. Because we know that he is faithful to the gospel, and he continued to walk in the truth, and the word has spread. Okay, and uh, that's what in verse three he said that. John said that when some believers came and testified. Uh, again, the backdrop is we know in the early days there are a lot of traveling preachers, uh, traveling evangelists. So people can, you know, uh, travel to different places and the word has uh, so called spread and John has heard about Gaius and that he knew that it is so much joy that because of Gaius who walk in the truth, that John called him my children, my children, okay, that what he has done has brought John much joy. The fact that he called uh, 
Scales, you know, categorized as one of his children. Again, we can see here they are in a possible mentor or mentee relationship. And we knew that what is walk in truth or love is basically honoring God's command. Honoring God's command when we walk in truth or walk in love. As it is written in 2 John chapter 1, verse 6. And this is love that we walk in obedience to his command. And further, his command is that you walk in love. So the first characteristics of Gaius is that he walk in truth and he is obedience to God's command. That is his first characteristics. The second characteristic we can read further in verse 5 to 6. He provided care and shelter to traveling preachers, even though they are strangers. Now this is something which, you know, today is very hard for some of us, even Christians, to emulate, to provide shelters and care to so-called church workers, even though they are strangers. In practical way, he extended warmth, friendship to those who were ministering the word of God from town to town. Okay, So Christian hospitality, I would say, was important for early church because uh, it's not like today. Um, churches today, you have your own in-house uh, pastors, you know, your own uh, so-called church staffs. But in the early days, they depended a lot on traveling preachers, traveling teachers. So in the early churches, Christian hospitality played a major role in a sense to support those preachers or teachers so that the word of God okay, can be so-called taught and can be spread around uh, so-called places around the church. We know the motivation of Gaius doing that because he wanted to honor God or please God. And John said that, okay, John said that directly to Gaius that he knew his motivation of providing care and hospitality because he wanted to honor or please God and be a partner in teaching the truth to the lost. This is in verse 7 to 8. While honoring God, Gaius wants to be a partner. He wants to be a partner in teaching or spreading the truth to the lost. Here we can say, it, is he a church leader? Is he a gifted person? The Bible didn't say. So Gaius may not have any spiritual gift or he may not hold any specific so-called influential position in the church. But we do know that, very importantly, he has a heart for the lost. And so though helping those preaching the truth, he made sure that these traveling teachers, they are well taken care of for the work of God. So this is so-called the second, I would call his second characteristics, that his motivations to show hospitality is not because just he is kind. He wants to honor God and he has a heart for the lost. In some of the version of the Bible, they use the word pagan, but it's basically people who haven't heard the gospel. So after we learn about so-called the good characteristics of Christians that we should imitate. Now we come to learn about the next person, which is a complete opposite. And his name is Diotrephes, verse 9 to 10. Okay, In just two short verses, okay, we can see, in a sense, how unchristian this person is okay he's a person who number one he loves to be a leader okay he loves to be a leader uh, he could be already one or he may not be 
but we know that he loves to be in a leader, meaning in an influential position in the church. Number two, he refused to welcome traveling preachers, okay? not just any traveling preachers, even John and his companion. Okay? You can find this in uh, verse 9 and 10. Number three, he made wild accusation or he lied about John. Fourthly, he instigated others not to help. He instigated others not to help. And lastly, he will discipline those who disagree with him by putting them out of the church. Isn't it quite uh, hilarious when we look back, you know, this is so-called uh, so-called Christian, or it could be even a church leader, and yet everything that he did here is complete opposite of what Jesus, you know, has been teaching his disciples and his followers. Now, what we can tell here is Dio Trevis is what I call a bossy dictac dictator. Not only he wants to be boss, he wants to boss people around, but he's also a dictator. In a sense that people who disagree with him, he will kick them out of the church. So we see the characteristics of here, I call it social ambition. The characteristics of pride, jealousy, slander, and abuse of power. You name it, you know, anything that can go wrong, this person has that characteristics. And it's shocking to find a believer with such behavior. And yet we see this. Sometimes we like to condemn, condemn or judge. Sometimes we do see this kind of behavior in ourselves as well. Just now I mentioned about social ambitions. You want to climb up the ladder. I talk about pride, jealousy, slander, abuse of power. Isn't it true sometimes we do? exhibit such characteristic in our lives. Sometimes when it comes to issues that in a sense maybe you know doesn't align with what we want to do or even our thinking uh, style, you know, our way of doing things. Yeah. Let alone, you know, a lot of time we will say, you know, that is the church down the road. You know, the people there are having this kind of attitude characters. I think this Again, this verse, you know, is speaking to myself. I'm not sure about you. You know, sometimes these are the characteristics that we need to be aware of, because when we are not careful, we may end up to be a mini duo Trevis. I call it a mini duo Trevis. So it's a reminder or warning to us when we fellowship with one another. Okay, when we fellowship with one another, when we are in a sense welcoming a co-workers, pastors, evangelists that we do not build our own kingdom, but we are building God's kingdom together. Because contrary to this, Dio Trevis, he is building his own little kingdom in the church. We don't focus on personalities, okay? but rather we focus on basic Christian doctrine of love and honoring God. Honoring God, including honoring his servants, pastors, workers, evangelists, prophets. Yeah. So Dio Trevis' character was the complete opposite of Gaius, which we read earlier, which is grace, loving, and show genuine Christian hospitality. That is a true godly servant. Yeah. And how did John? How did John see Dio Trevis with this kind of attitude and behavior? John didn't mince his work when he condemned what Dio Trevis has done. In verse 11, I use the word condemn because he didn't mince his word. Because he said he is a bad example, he's a bad influence, and he's not God's children. That is a very strong word. That he doesn't know God. Dio Trevis doesn't know God, even though, as we read, he could be, you know, a leader in the church. 
Now these are very strong words, okay? Uh, strong condemnations, condemnation used by John. But it can only prove that Diotrephus, okay, was never, he was never a genuine Christian. Take note that John never asked, okay? John never asked Gaius to take down Diotrephus from his positions. John never asked Gaius to start a campaign to dethrone or to kick out Diotrephus from the church. Instead, he used the word of counsel on do not imitate or don't let this influence you. I think it's a learning point for a lot of us. Sometimes, you know, when we don't see people eye to eye, especially in church settings, we either start to a campaign to bring down the person or we start to do something to strategize so that this person you know, will be, in a sense, kicked out or put in a cold storage. But John gave a gentle word of counsel to Gaius. Do not imitate or don't let this influence you. John said that he will come in verse 10 to expose and correct the wrongs. This is the wisdom exercised by John. John just said that I will come and correct the wrong. Yeah. So the last person we're going to uh, just touch a little bit is Demetrius. Okay, Demetrius. Demetrius is just in verse 12. Okay, it's mentioned briefly. He's a believer. He's a believer of trust and truth. And some uh, Bible scholars believe that Demetrius could have been the courier of this letter, meaning that he brought this letter from John to Gaius. And Demetrius has a high regard of truth. Why? Because so much so John wrote that everyone, everyone spoke well of Demetrius. Verse 12. Okay, everyone. And not only that, even the truth was a witness on his behalf. So there's a bit of playing of the English word here, meaning that truth can be personified so much so that if truth can talk, truth will also bear witness to Demetrius' life. So that's how Demetrius in a sense, his characters, when he walk, he's really a person who walk in the truth. And even truth can testify about Demetrius. John's endorsement of Demetrius is an indication of Demetrius' spiritual success. You can imagine John probably, you know, in today's term, pastoring a lot of churches and yet he can pick up this person Demetrius and possibly assign him this special duty to bring the letter so the in a sense John's endorsement okay spoke in a sense a good testimony about Demetrius spiritual success and with such an important affirmation it means Demetrius Okay, with such affirmation, Demetrius will most likely be blacklisted by Theotrephus. Remember, we said that Theotrephus will discipline those who disagree with him. But his kindness at okay, Demetrius being where and how he was at the point of that letter, his kindness didn't happen overnight. And it has been mentioned by John in the last part of his letter. So it is very obvious that Demetrius okay, continue, continue to do what he thinks is honoring God by helping those people, even though he is stepping the toe of Diotrephus, even though he's in the so-called blacklist. Okay, he's blacklisted by Theotrephus. 
and he continued to support the truth and those preaching the truth. So what a lesson that we can learn from Demetrius, knowing fully well that in such a difficult church environment, probably he's considered a black sheep, of course, you know, in a good manner by Dio Trefis, but he continued to plow on, he continued to do what is right by supporting the truth and those pending it. Lastly, how do we apply and what can we learn? Okay, very simple lessons today, just about three persons on the surface. Yeah, we can you know learn about their characteristics, their attitude, their behavior. But one thing I learned, and I hope you agree with me, third John is about preeminence of Christ, the supremacy of Christ. Why so? Because when we place when we place Christ on the highest above all things, above all creatures, above all creations, naturally we will walk in truth and love. Naturally, we will walk in truth and love, just like Gaius or Demetrius. And the opposite is Diotrephes. And we can say that he has the love of the world and he doesn't know God. He has the love of the world and he doesn't know God. If you find these two so-called sentences familiar because we study this this week. It is in First John chapter two, verse fifteen. Okay, First John chapter two, verse fifteen. Let me just read First John chapter two, verse fifteen. Do not love the world or anything in the world, because if anyone loves the world, love for the Father is not in them, and he doesn't know God. It's in First John chapter four verse 7 and 8. Dear friends, let us love one another for love comes from God. Everyone who loves has been born of God and knows God. Okay, Everyone who loves has been born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God because God is love. These are very familiar scriptural verses. So in conclusion, 3 John teaches us on Yes, grace and hospitality, but the fundamental issue is preeminence of Christ and who is God to us? Do we know God? Do we honor Him? And do we walk in the truth just like Gaius and Demetrius? With that, I will conclude my sharing today.